In our headliner, Morgan Stanley's chief U.S. equity strategist, Mike Wilson, joins us now on the phone. Mike, good to see you again, or at least good to talk to you. Thanks, Scott. Good to be with you. You don't think that this growth or this tech correction is over yet? Is that right? Well, I think, look, I think your panel is describing the situation well, which is it's, it's not tech per se. It's uh, expensive stocks, with, and some of those happen to be in the tech bucket. There's also expensive stocks in biotech, and there's expensive stocks in, you know, even in non-tech groups, okay? And, and what's really changed in the last, you know, two or three months is that the bond market has woken up to the idea that actually the back end is going to move out. And so the narrative three months ago was that, well, rates can't go up, they won't go up, the Fed won't let it happen, but here we are at 150, 160. And so now the equity market is accepting this idea that was inevitable, and we're adjusting. So I don't think this is, you know, the end of the bull market or the end of tech stocks per se, but it was an adjustment that was very necessary, and it's good. Now, today, obviously, we're <laughs> rocketing back. Um, you know, the volatility over the last week or so, I mean, that's not – telling me that it's over, right? In other words, when you go at 4% in a day, it just tells me things are still volatile and the market's still adjusting. So, yeah, I think the adjustment process on valuations is ongoing. The bull market is also ongoing. It just happens to be the leadership now is away from this area. Okay, well, what happens if Tepper's right and the sell-off in Treasuries is likely over? So rates are now going to stabilize after spooking everybody out by going up pretty fast pretty far relative to where they were. What if that has now subsided? Doesn't that change things? Well, I mean, I, t I kind of agree. I mean, the move in rates was a, it was a nonlinear move that you know, we sort of expected. And then there will be some consolidation here. But the, the rate of change is so dramatic that now people have to accept the idea that rates will probably go up again at some point. So here's the, here's the question, Scott, I think you have to ask yourself. The stock market now knows that. Right. So now the stock market has to believe the idea that, hey, maybe the Fed isn't going to curtail the back end or they don't or they can't or they shouldn't. I mean, because the economy is going to be booming. And so the equity market will move in front of that, just like the equity market moved in front of the recovery last year. Valuations are going to come down for these longer duration areas. So once again, it doesn't mean that all these stocks are at risk and they can't work over time. But this adjustment process, I don't think, is over. I know, but why is your base case then right where we are now for the S&P 500? you got 3,900. We're sitting literally right there as we're having this conversation. If, you know, the bull market is intact, we're going to have a booming economy, we know where, wh why rates are going up, what's the problem? No problem at all. We just want to own the stocks that are going to go up, and we want to avoid the ones that are going to continue to see valuation compression. By the way... This is very normal at this stage of any recovery, right? That's why we made that call at the end of last year, which is, you know, during the recession is when you get the big multiple expansion. That's when you have the big returns. Then you typically have a year of consolidation at the index level, and you get a rotation. And, you know, that's, that's how we're positioned. We're, we're levered to the areas of the market that have the most operating leverage to a booming economy. And those stocks have worked extremely well. So we're going to play it at the stock level, bull market as opposed to at the index level.